The court rule has effectively gutted the referendum authority of the membership in the bar. I strongly support SB 5721, which would require the Bar Association to obtain approval from its members before raising dues. The legislature, having created the Washington State Bar Association, retains both the right and the obligation to ensure that it fulfills the purposes for which it was initially created. The judiciary is not well suited to determine the reasonableness of the amount of bar dues. In light of the fact that nearly 30% of what they spend their funds on is not mandated, membership circulated a petition, many members signed it. I was involved in that process and we gathered over 2,000 signatures. They were submitted to the Bar Association in accordance with the bylaws. Now those bylaws read, all qualifying petitions will be put to a vote of the active membership. But the WSBA did not want to have a vote of the membership. So instead, they went and met with the court. And after they did that, they decided that they would issue an executive order from the Board of Governors that despite the fact that over 2,000 members of their organization, well over the 5%, had signed that petition, they weren't even going to let it go to a vote and hear what the membership had to say. They plan on spending $5.4 million on non-mandatory programs. That's programs they don't have to spend that money on. In terms of the Keller objection, if one exercises that right, does that reduce one's obligation by that third? The Keller deduction is, well, it's just window dressing. I am a member of the bar and I speak in support of this bill. The bar's justification for disallowing a membership vote of this one is in serious error. There is no constitutional nor legislative authority given to the court over dues. First of all, I want to endorse the remarks that have been made by Professor DeWolf and by Angus Lee and by Vicki Parker. I would simply say that it's high time that this legislature slap down the Supreme Court and let them know who's running the show as far as policy is concerned in the state of Washington. My name is Jill Carmey. I'm a governor serving on the Board of Governors for the State Bar. I am joined by Paula Littlewood, Executive Director of the State Bar. The bar has signed in as other on this bill. The bar's Board of Governors understands the concerns raised about increasing bar license fees. We understand that for some, an increase in those license fees has a real impact. These license fees go towards programming that ensures competent legal representation. The Board of Governors decided not to proceed with holding a vote. Just a question. Do you know how the court reached that conclusion? Did you meet with them and brief them on this so that they had information? There was no hearings or anything or any opportunity for the 2,000 members that signed the petition, which under the bylaws you're required to then put for a vote, and you decided not to do that, not to follow the bylaws. Was there this meeting where you and the court got together not without any public notice? Good question. I'll turn that over to Paula. We met with them for about an hour and then we left. I mean, you have a specific requirement in the bylaws to put this for a vote. In fact, you did previously. And I guess because the vote went the wrong way, we came up with this rule. And even though we were assured, I was assured as chairman of the committee from the bar and from the court, I thought that this was just maintaining the status quo and was not going to be used in this fashion to deny the membership a vote. You've cut off their due process rights, basically. All the GR-12 amendment did was codify a process that had been in place. They've never used it to, in effect, got a referendum previously, have they? Not that I'm aware of. Senator Angel, you had a question? One of the questions I have is where does the authority come from to not follow the bylaws? You're all lawyers, right? So we assure you that we continue to work collaboratively with our members to ensure adequate programming. Fees were escalating quite a bit until 2012. Then they went down for about three years. 
from 450 back to 325, then they went up a little bit. Because expenses were starting to exceed revenue. In terms of the history of sort of the up and the down, um, you know, we've been on this trajectory of, of reducing our footprint to be more effective. I'm not sure how the membership determines the reasonableness. Is that this is a license fee, like you know, your driver's license or you know, a hairdresser who needs a license to, to apply a trade. Um, Mr. Hohenstein, uh, um, you know, I basically felt we received uh, assurances from your predecessor and the bar that it wouldn't be used in this way, and here, here we are. Do you have any comment on that? Actually, Mr. Chair, for the record, Brady Hornstein with the courts. Um, I'm sorry about that. I, I don't have any specific information I can offer about that, but I'm certainly apologize for the, the situation. And I guess my question to the Bar Association is, do you feel this hurts your, your credibility? What happened in this specific instance uh, that led to no referendum vote being held is that the court also said that the proposed fee, if passed, would be unreasonable. So I think in this narrow instance, we you you have this outcome, but I think that it in a different scenario. Yeah, I, I think that's why Judge Gozer referred into me as under the radar that this was uh, uh, an effort to get around it. Why else uh, would they would they offer that amendment? And and this is the way it's been used. And I guess if I was uh, sitting in the shoes of the people that are proponents of this bill, I would say, well, it seems our only option is a voluntary bar like other states have. If these sort of uh, activities are gonna gonna go on, where you're uh, imposing things and not and, and really violating uh, due process rights uh, uh, by the membership that are they're in the bylaws. I mean, it's one thing if you repeal the bylaws or took that section out, but it was in there, and then we have this new amendment, and we're told the legislature's told us it's just a status quo. Don't be worried, and then it's used to deny. Uh, basically got a referendum. Yes, you could still have the referendum. And I guess if you really uh, were representing, in my view, your membership, you would have that referendum. And if it passed, you go back to the court and ask them to reverse their, their uh, decision uh, on this. And I mean, the membership, what are they? Are they, they're, they're peons that uh, it can be ignored and, and you know, the, the higher ups and the bar and the, and the court get together. I mean, that's the concern here. And at least with me, the, the bar certainly loses some credibility as a result of the emails that were, were sent.